Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 25th of May. Kashmiri separatist Yasin Malik sentenced to life in prison in terror funding case by Indian court. Pakistan's ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan leads march to Islamabad to demand early elections. And Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikrame Singhe takes on crucial finance ministry portfolio. And now for all the details. An Indian court on Wednesday sentenced Kashmiri separatist leader Yasid Malik to life imprisonment in a 2017 terror funding case. He was convicted last week in the case for raising funds for carrying out terrorist and other unlawful activities in Jammu and Kashmir in the name of freedom struggle. India's NIA, the National Investigation Agency Court on Wednesday, sentenced Kashmiri separatist leader Yasin Malik to life in prison in a 2017 terror funding case. He was convicted in the case last week for carrying out terrorist and other unlawful activities in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory in the name of freedom struggle. Two life sentences and five punishments of 10 years of rigorous imprisonment each have been given to Malik which will run concurrently and monetary penalty of 10 lakh rupees has also been levied. Malik had earlier submitted before the court that he would not beg for mercy. The NIA had sought death penalty for him in the matter. Court has only pronounced the order on sentence in which he has given sentences in various sections. कई धाराओं में सजा सुनाई है. उसमें 121 IPC और 17 UAPA के अंदर उन्होंने उमर कैद की सजा सुनाई है. Celebrations broke out in parts of Jammu city while Srinagar city in Kashmir Valley witnessed a partial shutdown. Stone pelting and protest demonstrations were also reported from a few places. Earlier on Wednesday, three Pakistani terrorists of jaish e mohammed terror outfit and one policeman were killed in an encounter in Baramulla district of Jammu and Kashmir. India has long accused Pakistan supports militancy in Jammu and Kashmir. Islamabad, however, denies this saying it only provides diplomatic and moral support to Kashmiri people. The world's biggest sugar producer, India, has imposed restrictions on the exports of the sweetener for the first time in six years by capping them at 10 million tons this year to prevent a surge in domestic prices after mills sold a record volume on the world market. An official said that new marketing year could, however, start on October 1 with carry-forward stocks of 6.2 million tons. India has imposed restrictions on the sugar exports for the first time in six years by capping this season's exports at 10 million tons to prevent a surge in domestic prices after mills sold a record volume on the world market. The decision to restrict exports came as a precautionary measure in an attempt to ensure enough supplies during festival season, Food Secretary Sudhanshu Pandey told reporters on Wednesday. The new marketing year could, however, start on October 1 with carry-forward stocks of 6.2 million tons, the official said. India is the world's biggest sugar producer and the second biggest exporter behind Brazil. The government has also asked exporters to seek its permission for any overseas shipments between June 1 and October 31. Indian mills have so far signed contracts to export 9.1 million tons of sugar this year and have already dispatched around 8.2 million tons. In October, November are festivity seasons in India. You have Diwali, Dashehra and generally during that period, the consumption of sugar also goes up. So for those two and a half to three months, availability of stocks within the country is important. Earlier this month, India also banned wheat exports as a scorching heat wave slash output and domestic prices hit a record high. 
The government said it would still allow exports backed by already issued letters of credit and to countries that request supplies to meet their food security needs. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's ousted Premier and PTI Party Chairman Imran Khan on Wednesday led a rally from Peshawar City to capital Islamabad despite a ban by the government on the march, alleging that he is bringing the protesters to the national capital with evil design. Khan was ousted in a no-confidence vote last month. He called on his supporters to reach Islamabad and stay there until the new government is dissolved and a date for a fresh election is announced. He said no blockade can stop his freedom march from reaching the diplomatic area in the city. There were also reports of clashes between police and PTI supporters as they tried blocking them. Dozens of activists were also rounded up in Punjab and Sindh provinces. Heavy contingents of police and paramilitary troops were deployed in major cities since Tuesday evening. An agreement for an alternative venue to hold the rally as directed by the Supreme Court was still to be reached between the PTI and the government till the last reports came in. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikrami Singhe will hold dual charge as Finance Minister, the President's office announced on Wednesday, and will lead talks with the International Monetary Fund IMF for a bailout for the crisis-hit nation. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikrami Singhe was sworn in as Finance Minister on Wednesday and will lead talks with the International Monetary Fund IMF for a bailout for the crisis-hit nation. Vikramasinghe took his oath in front of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa in Colombo as the President's office released a statement confirming the appointment. In an interview with Reuters on Tuesday, Vikramasinghe said he will present an interim budget within six weeks, slashing infrastructure projects to reroute funds into a two-year relief program. With, 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 with the interim budget, it's, it's just of... Uh, cutting down expenditure, cutting to the bone where possible, and transferring it to welfare. Vikramasinghe, a political veteran who has previously been Prime Minister five times, was sworn in for a sixth term two weeks ago after the President's elder brother Mahinda resigned from the post. Seen as an economic liberal, Vikramasinghe already has experience with the IMF, having served as Prime Minister when Sri Lanka last had a program with the international lender in 2016. He has also built relations with regional powers India and China, key investors and lenders who vie for influence over the island nation that lies along busy shipping routes linking Asia to Europe. Sri Lanka, an island nation of 22 million people, has been hit by its worst economic crisis since independence in 1948, with a severe shortage of foreign exchange stalling imports, including essentials such as fuel and medicines. In news from Afghanistan, the UN Security Council has called on Taliban authorities in Afghanistan to swiftly reverse policies and practices that are restricting the human rights and freedoms of Afghan women and girls. Earlier this month, the Taliban ordered women to cover their faces in public, a return to a signature policy of the Islamist group's past hardline rule. They also asked television broadcasters to ensure that female presenters on local station cover their faces when on air. The United Nations Security Council on Tuesday called on Taliban authorities in Afghanistan to swiftly reverse policies and practices that are restricting the human rights and freedoms of Afghan women and girls. The 15-member council agreed to the Norway-drafted statement nearly two weeks after it discussed the situation behind closed doors. It expressed deep concern regarding the increasing erosion of respect for the human rights and fundamental freedoms of women and girls in Afghanistan by the Taliban. Earlier this month, the Taliban ordered women to cover their faces in public, a return to a signature policy of the Islamist group's past hardline rule. They also asked television broadcasters to ensure that female presenters on local stations cover their faces when on air. The Security Council reiterated their call on the Taliban to adhere to their commitments to reopen schools for all Afghan female students without further delay. Under the Taliban's previous rule from 1996 to 2001, 
women had to cover up, could not work and girls were banned from school. But after seizing power in August last year, the Taliban said it would respect women's rights. However, in March, the Taliban backtracked on the announcement that high schools would open for girls saying they would remain closed until a plan was drawn up in accordance with Islamic law for them to reopen. The Islamic Emirates signed an agreement on Tuesday with a consortium from the United Arab Emirates, UAE, to provide ground assistance services to three airports in Afghanistan in an attempt to increase trade and foreign investment in the country to get out of the economic crisis. Speaking at the ceremony during the signing of the contract, Mullah Baradar, first Deputy Prime Minister, said that security is good in the country and the Islamic Emirate is ready to cooperate with investing countries. GAAC, a UAE-based company, will provide assistance services at the Kabul International Airport as well as at those of Kandahar and Herat. The deputy spokesman for the Taliban government, Inamullah Samangani, has said. In news from Nepal, unveiling plans and policies for the upcoming fiscal year on Tuesday, Nepal government announced its aim to achieve economic growth and stability through a combination of fiscal and monetary policies. Sectors like agriculture, transport, information technology and industry will be promoted as per the policies. The Nepal government on Tuesday announced its aim and achieve economic growth and stability through a combination of fiscal and monetary policies. As per the government's policies and programs for the fiscal year 2022-23 presented by President Bidya Devi Bhandari in Parliament, sectors like agriculture, transport, information, technology and industry will be promoted along with the introduction of economic recovery programs. While focusing on economic growth, the president said the government will control inflation to a certain point and the new policy and program are focused on implementing the spirit of federalism. Yatayat Urza Paritan Ra Sutana Pravidilai Arthik Bridiko Sambahako Rupma Ogi Badai Arthik Punarutanka Bises Karikram Marfat Utansil Orthodontra Nirman Gorinicha. Ensuring a smooth electricity supply, the government will also promote electricity, domestic consumption and foreign trade. The use of electric vehicles and electric cooking stoves will be promoted. The government will on May 29 present the budget for the coming fiscal year according to policies and programs for the current fiscal year. A centuries-old mosque in Bangladesh built with China ware plates and pieces of glass has continued to draw tourists from around the world. The place of worship has come to be known as Chini Masjid or Chinese Mosque over the years for its use of distinct and fascinating Chinese ceramics and stone pieces. Chini Masjid or the Chinese Mosque in Nilfamari, 360 kilometers northwest of Bangladesh's capital Dhaka, is a unique piece of architecture that has continued to draw crowds of tourists. Built in 1863 by Haji Bakir Ali Ahmed as a little prayer room and renovated and beautified with 25 tons of chinaware plates and pieces of glass over the years by devotees, it soon came to be known as the Chini Masjid or Chinese Mosque. Many tourists from home and abroad now come to visit it, a priest said. Our mosque is three parts of the mosque. One is the British, one is the Pakistan, one is the Bangladesh. The mosque is the British, one is the 18th century. And the mosque is the same as the mosque. We are the same as the mosque. We are the same as the mosque. We are the same as the mosque. चीनी मौजूद हम रात देख लामे खाने खूब बालू लगते से और जो कारुकार्ज गुलो हमारे खूब मुक्तो करे से शाम प्रतिक समय तो आश्चर्य ये रकम स्थापित शुरू जो कारुकार्ज गुलो है ये गुलो तो आश्चर्य देखा जाए ना Nearly 300 pieces of cross marble stones have been used to decorate Chini Masjid. These small chips of chinaware plates and pieces of glass are both coloured and non-coloured and make it one of the most fascinative and distinctive piece of architecture in Bangladesh. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. 
Now our viewers can watch the show on SaudiAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.